I came here years ago and started up, you know, the SOA watch with no vision that one day we would have 15 or 20,000 people coming together. But the issue is not a complicated one. It's about men with guns. It's about a combat military school uh, at Fort Benning that has caused untold suffering and death to, to the people of Latin America. Uh, the over 60,000 graduates who train here have uh, provided the muscle for U.S. foreign policy in some 16 countries of Latin America. And for many years, we were very ignorant about what this school really did to the people of Latin America. Uh, but something happened uh, along the way. Uh, it was after the mask of the six Jesuits in 1989 in El Salvador, along with uh, a young mother and her teenage daughter, Selena. Uh, they were massacred. They were very upset with the Jesuits because they were speaking about the slaughter of the innocents in El Salvador. At that time, our country, the United States, was pumping a million dollars a day into this country. Um, members of Congress were upset after the massacre of the Jesuits, known by some of them. They sent a congressional task force to investigate. They come back reporting that those responsible, the majority of them, had trained in the United States at Fort Benning, Georgia, at a school called the U.S. Army School of the Americas. I had been in Latin America. I had worked and lived in Bolivia with the poor for five years. I was uh, arrested in my fifth year and expelled under General Hugo Bonzer, another one of the many generals that we supported and sustained. Uh, and I felt it was important uh, to come now to Fort Benning and to investigate this school, to do a little reconnaissance work. And I was joined by friends, and what we found was a school hiding behind a wall of secrecy. What we found, too, was a school, again, that was causing untold suffering and death to a lot of people. And we wanted to get the word out. And so we began to do research, set up a website. We began also to protest across the line, simply say, not in our name, as a humble act of solidarity with the people of Latin America. Um, we were arrested for these nine violent acts of civil disobedience, sent to prison. When they sent us to prison, it would energize more people to come. It would expose the issue. And every time they would send us to prison, the following November, when we began to start meeting at the main gate in November, uh, the numbers grew. And I'm happy to say that right now, um, our movement is very diverse, while beginning with some, some of the old timers, you know, who'd, like myself, we had worked in Latin America right now, about, I would say over half of the 20,000 who will be here this year will be the youth, our high school and college students who are being introduced to Latin America through this issue. We have a lot of nuns, a lot of military veterans, uh, like myself, who was in the military before becoming a Catholic priest. Uh, we have a lot of senior citizens, parents with their children, when we gather here, uh, we come from around the country, different ages, backgrounds, experiences, but we really speak with one voice. And what we're, we're, what we're all about really is coming together as U.S. citizens to express our love, support, solidarity with sisters and brothers of Latin America who have been and continue to be the victims of our country's foreign policy. When I left the military, I, I was, uh, my fourth year was in Vietnam. Young man, very ignorant of our foreign policy, believing our cause was a noble one. But Vietnam was a turning point in my life. Uh, I'd never, I'd lost my hope there, lost friends, wounded there. And it was there where I began, in a sense, to go through a sort of a radical conversion in my life. Uh, gradually, it wasn't overnight. But I began for the first time in the military, in Vietnam, to question... Uh, my country's foreign policy. I'd never done that before. And I wanted to rediscover, try and recapture this hope that I once had, this joy that I once had in my life. Talked to an army chaplain, Catholic priest in the military, and he recommended the Marinal Order, a group working in 16 countries around the world serving the poor. And uh, so I entered Marino and later ordained a Catholic priest and assigned to our work, uh, Marino's work in Bolivia. And that became, like Vietnam, a very radicalizing experience. It was my introduction to Latin America. And basically what happened during those five years living in this slum, this barrio of La Paz, Bolivia, uh, the poor, they became my teachers. Uh, they began to teach me about their struggle, a struggle for survival. 
they began to teach me about my country's foreign policy, and it wasn't pretty. We were there as, in a way, as the new conquistadors. We were there, and in other countries of the developing world, um, making huge profits off of exploiting the cheap labor and the natural resources. And little by little, you know, I began, became educated, like many of us who go to Latin America and other countries. Let me say this, I, I've come to the conclusion our greatest enemy in this country, in our country, the United States today, is ignorance. Uh, and I, I'm a product of that. I, we know so little about our country's foreign policy and what it means to those on the receiving end. We know so little about other cultures and their histories, uh, so much older than our own. And that ignorance gets us in big trouble. It got me in big trouble in Vietnam. It's getting our nation in big, big trouble in Iraq. It comes from that ignorance. Uh, my hope, of course, is that we can educate ourselves through wisdom and love, that we can find some hope. No shortcuts, though. We have to do, we have done a lot of hard work over the years to break down this ignorance about this issue of the School of the Americas and what it's done to the people of Latin America and how it fits in into our foreign policy. But talking just for the last oh, 18 years, high schools, colleges, church groups, peace groups, I and others, uh, little by little, people become more aware, more educated. And I'm convinced that we all have this thing we call compassion. And with knowledge, I think, often that compassion surfaces. And this is what has happened on our issue. A lot of people come to know of the Jesuits, what happened to them, Selena, the young daughter of Elba, uh, the church women, Bishop Oscar Romero and Rufina Amaya uh, in El Salvador, the only, the sole survivor of El Masote, where over 800 were killed, including her husband and her three children. And people come to know about Rufina. And she came here a few years ago to tell her story. People were deeply moved, inspired, they wept, we all wept just to be in the presence of this humble Salvadoran woman, just telling what happened to her and her family. And you just see hearts moved, and this is what has happened over the years. Hearts have been moved, more and more people come here, and I'm convinced that one day soon, we'll shut it down. Just real quick, um, two signs of hope. We have a vote in Congress uh, each year calling for the cutting off of funds, the money, the millions going into this uh, school now called uh, WINSEC, well known as the School of the Americas, um, it's all paid for by our tax money. And what we're, we are saying, many of us, that this money, the millions should be going into schools for our children, for health care in our inner cities, for the elderly, for programs, schools and hospitals in places like Bolivia, El Salvador, not into uh, a combat school. The people of Latin America, the developing world, they don't need commandos. They don't need uh, M16s. They need food, medicines, adequate housing, and, and other things. Uh, we came within six votes of cutting off the funding just a few months ago. Another vote will come up in, in this coming year. We're hopeful. Another sign of hope, we have been visiting over this last year, a delegation representing our movement, 13 countries in Latin America, meeting with their presidents, defense ministers, uh, human rights leaders. And we request in these meetings that they sever their ties to this school. And I'm happy to report after visiting 13 countries, it's been a very busy year. Um, five countries have withdrawn their troops, severed their ties to the school. The first being Venezuela, then Argentina, Uruguay, Costa Rica, and just uh, last month, um, Bolivia. President Evo Morales made an announcement that he's pulling out the troops. So this coming year, we're going to Nicaragua, Brazil, Ecuador, Dominican Republic, and a couple of more. Uh, we're hopeful. The way we see it, uh, a school without students will have to shut down. So we're getting there. We're, we're, you know, our hope is strong, but there's a lot of, lot of work to be done. And like Bishop Oscar Romero uh, said before he was assassinated by a graduate of this school, he said, you know, we can all do something for peace and we can do it well. 
and a lot of people who are coming into our movement discover that, gifts that we never thought we had, uh, skills uh, we never thought we, we, we had, and we start using those gifts we have and skills to work for peace, and this is what's happening. And it's very, very good to see this. There's a lot of hope. I think people are looking for hope today, especially what's going on in Iraq, what's going on in Latin America. And when we come together like this to use our voices, our gifts, our energy for other people, especially victims of violence and oppression, something happens first to us. There's a joy, I think, that we start feeling about, you know, about ourselves. And we start finding hope with all these kindred spirits that we meet in this struggle.